How do you know if you pick the right niche? And this is gonna be one of those videos, those are my people over there, by the way. Um, this will be especially useful for those of you guys who've had to reset your niche either since the COVID or maybe you just reached a point in your business where you've gone as far as you can and you realize you wanna do something different, uh, the old pivot, and you might be in three or four or five different niches and feeling it out and, and still trying to figure out what is the right niche for me. So this video is gonna help with that. And by the way, those of you guys who don't know me already, my name's Frankie Finn, we got a little surfing dude or paddleboarding dude lady i can't tell my eyesight sucks um for those of you guys who don't know me my name is frankie finn i'm the author of the book beyond the agency box since 2007 i've built three different agencies up to 100 plus simultaneous clients and i've helped hundreds of people to live the whole agency beach laptop lifestyle see my lady bending over over there it's a nice ass so let's get into it Alright, my fine, fine folks, I said this would be especially useful for those of you guys who are in uh, different niches, and I'd love to actually hear which niches you guys have tried or experimented with. Maybe we could make like a comment section of collective wisdom of which niches you've been in, whether you liked them or not. I've tried probably, uh, I don't know, a dozen different niches over the years, like seriously, and maybe dabbled into like three or four dozen, just trying different things. And I'll tell you, this is an underrated thing, but the right niche, I say, are like friends with money. My, my, my man, Nate, good friend of mine said, if you imagine your, your best clients coming over for dinner and that thought scares you, then you're in the wrong niche, right? Like if uh, I have a couple of lawyers, for example, I don't work with every lawyer, but I got a couple of really cool ones that said, hey, we're gonna take a trip down to Cabo. And that to me inspired a like, fuck yeah, reaction. Like, dude, I can't wait to hang out with you, right? And I'll tell you the most under-optimized metric in the agency space is, is this fun? And if it's fun, what you'll find is it's actually easy to grow a business when you got the right people and it's fun. If it's uphill and it's effort, you can do it. I've done it, but man, does it really, really suck. Another thing that'll help you, by the way, is you, every niche has its pros and cons. So if you're looking for one that like has all pros and no cons, you're not gonna find it. Um, what you're looking for more than anything is as well is like do i relate to these people in a way where my experience can be useful so like i don't like have like this magic love of lawyers but when i talk to lawyers and they tell me uh, i have nothing but nine to five meetings clients aren't very thankful what i do there's tons of bureaucracy this whole thing is different than uh what i thought it would be it's kind of a thankless job in general um I don't necessarily like relate to being a lawyer, but I relate to those things very immensely. I used to have a life in the shitty corporate world, worked for the Ford Motor Company, and those kind of things are just like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, dude. So for you, before you start thinking about where most people start their niche selection is thinking, who's got money? Who can pay me the most? And what you'll find is in every niche, there's a spectrum. There's broke people in every niche and there's people who have money in every niche. I found this out when we were, were starting out with roofers. You know, we would get a lot of the rednecks who worked for themselves and had one crew and were barely making between, you know, 50 and 100 grand, which is, you know, not bad personally, but that's not like huge for a business. And then Dan stumbled into a $100 million roofing company and was able to do tons of huge deals. By the way, there's our ball and minivan life over there. Where are we? Oh, I guess I'm facing the wrong way. The glare, man, it's blinding me, sorry, I can't see. Anyways, so I want you to think about those two things before you think about money, because you can always specialize in the top 1% of the niche has money is, is this gonna be fun for me? Like, would I want these people over at my house? And then secondly, is my experience gonna be useful for helping them solve problems, right? So like when I find, like when I work with the, uh, the redneck niches, as I call them, the work with your hands guys, those guys are cool, but I don't relate to that. I've never worked my hands. These are not real work hands. These are, you know, go in the water and play with the ocean kind of hands, right? So, um, you know, I relate more to that like corporate-y kind of feel, right? So you want to like connect with people where your experience is going to be useful. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments about what your experience is with different niches, which ones you tried and which ones turned out to be a good fit for you and which ones weren't. You only have to be right once, by the way. You can pick one niche and stay with it the rest of your life if you want to. So that's the cool thing. You can try 10 of them, be wrong nine times and be right once and that's good enough. So I hope that's helpful to you guys out there. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe and may the force be with you.